Welcome to the HB channel. My name is Hans Beekhuizen and this time we look at the enigmatic decibel that, when you start to know it, isn't enigmatic at all. In Meridian MQA part 1, Y24 bit 192 kHz audio, we have seen that the math in audio differs from day to day math due to the properties of sound and how we as humans experience it. For reasons many don't understand, the decibel or dB is often used to specify audio equipment and sound. In this video I will explain what the dB is and why it's used. I will use some math but if you are not into math you can easily skip those parts. When appropriate I will give you the time code to jump to. Let me start by explaining that the decibel always expresses a ratio, more or less like a percentage. So it's no absolute value. When a manufacturer brags that its turnover this year has grown with 400%, a trick that is often used, it usually means that the prior turnover was very low and might have grown from one product to four products a year. But it might also mean that they have sold 400,000 products if last year's sales were 100,000. So in a ratio you always have to know to what it is related. The same goes for the decibel. To get a proper understanding of the dB I will go back in history to the time when the dB came to birth. When the telephone was just invented, the American Bell Telephone Company researches losses in landlines. They needed a way to calculate the relation between power loss and the perceived loudness. They found that to achieve a doubling of the perceived loudness, a tenfold of the power was needed. In those days power was a scarce product since the telephone system initially worked without any amplification. If you wanted more power you just had to speak up louder. But they have found a unit to measure landline losses and called it the bell as a tribute to the inventor Graham Bell. It stood for a doubling of the perceived loudness and thus for a tenfold power. What this means becomes clear in the following table where I used one watt of power as a reference. In those days they would have had a far smaller figure but that's not the point right now. The first line shows that in this table zero bell is set to one watt. One bell then means ten times as much power, thus ten watts resulting in doubling the perceived loudness. Two bell needs 100 watts and is three times as loud as zero bell. Three bell needs 1000 watts and is four times as loud. If you study this table closely you must notice that the number in front of the bell corresponds to the number of zeros in front of watts. Mathematicians call this logarithm and write it like this. The first line is not that different but the following lines show a superscript number above the 10 called the exponent. What logarithm does is only name the exponent of a base number. In audio a base of 10 is used as we have seen before. Don't bother too much if you miss the concept, any modern calculator will do the math for you. The formula is log P1 divided by P2, where P1 is the first power and P2 the second. To non-mathematicians this sounds quite complex but it's really easy if you use the calculator on your smartphone. Start by dividing the one power value by the other and consequently press the log 10 button on the calculator. Let's do the difference between 15 watts and 2 watts. Divide 15 by 2, the result is 7.5. Press the log 10 button and check the outcome to find that difference between 2 watts and 50 watts is 0.875 bell. In practice the bell appeared to be too coarse, so the decibel was introduced, one tenth of a bell, which coincidentally is the smallest level difference we can hear in wideband signals. 
As a re result, 10 dB is twice as loud and 10 times the power. The formula is the same but the outcome is multiplied by 10. 10 log P1 divided by P2. On the calculator you do the same as before but at the end multiply the outcome by 10. So the difference between 2 watts and 15 watts is 8.75 decibel. Back to the genesis of the telephone system. To preserve power the impedance of the microphone and the speaker were closely matched. After the invention of the amplifier there was no, need, no longer need for this. It became far more practical not to rely on power but on voltage for transport and have it locally amplified. The rule of thumb here is to have the input impedance of the receiver at last 10 times higher than the output impedance of the sender. This reduces the current and thus the power needed, while the voltage gives a clear representation of the signal. It also has consequences for calculating in dBs. If you are not interested in the math behind it all, just jump ahead to the timecode below where I show you how to simply calculate a voltage difference by having the calculator do the difficult work. We here have the formula for calculating power in dBs. Power is measured by measuring a voltage drop across a load. The power is then calculated by dividing the voltage squared by the impedance of the load. When we want to calculate differences in voltages, we only need to investigate the voltage part of the formula. We start with the formula as we know it for calculating power. Since we need to calculate the voltage, we replace the symbol for power, the P, by the formula for calculating the power, the voltage squared divided by the impedance. So we take voltage 1 squared divided by R and divide that by the voltage 2 squared divided by R. We can then remove the R since R divided by R is 1 and thus irrelevant in the division. The next step is to move the square sign to outside the parenthesis. But it can be made even simpler. We can take the square sign and move it to the front of the formula where it becomes a simple multiplication by 2, since there it is on the other side of the logarithmic calculation, thus in the exponent of 10. We can then multiply the 10 by 2 and get the formula for voltages, 20 log U1 divided by U2. So when we need to calculate the difference between two powers, we use 10 log P1 over P2 and when we need to calculate the voltage, we use 20 log U1 over U2. Now that we know how to calculate dBs, do we know what for instance 12 dB is? No, we can't since the dB stands for a ratio as we have seen in the formulas. It provides only for a ratio to a given value and no absolute value. So plus 4 dB is not always 1.22 volts, the presumed recording studio level. Not necessarily since no reference is given. Luckily that, had, that has been standardized as well, making it possible to use dB as a quasi absolute value. Going back to the beginning of broadcast, we see transformer balance 600 ohm line connections. It was then decided that 1 milliwatt over 600 ohms was the reference and it was called dBm, dB in reference to 1 milliwatt. The formula is 10 log P divided by P ref, which becomes 10 log P divided by 0.001. Since power driven systems have been replaced by voltage driven systems, the dBm today is seldom used or wrongly used in audio technique. But it had its impact on the future since the voltage drop at 1 milliwatt over 600 ohms, which is 0.775 volts became a reference on its own. The NAB, the North American Broadcast Organization, defined that at 0 dBm VU meters had to be adjusted to plus 4 VU to compensate for the slow response of the VU meter. Plus 4 VU above 0 dBm equals a voltage drop over 600 ohms of 1.22 volts. There you have 
the 1.22 volts studio reference again. When voltage driven connections became popular, 0.775 volts was kept as a reference at its own and thus without reference to a given power. To indicate that the reference was voltage instead of watts, dBU was used, U standing for the sign for voltage. So the dBU is a voltage ratio and is cal calculated using the formula 20 log U divided by U ref, resulting in 20 log U divided by 0.775. Consequently, the more logical reference of 1 volt became popular and was named dBV, where the capital V stands for volt. Again, this is a voltage ratio using the same basic formula as dBU, but this time U ref is 1 and since the division by 1 is irrelevant, the formula can be simplified to 20 log U. So if you want to know how many dBV the Redboot spec 2 volt audio output is, you enter 2 on the calculator, press log 10 and then multiply the outcome by 20. The answer should be 6 dBs. There is also a dB that is used for the power output of amplifiers. It's not as popular but far more useful than the watt. The watt is linear while we want logarithmic in everything audio. Since it's about power, the 10 log P1 divided by P2 formula is used. But this time P2 is replaced by the reference. The reference used here is 1 watt, so we replace P reference with 1. And since the division by 1 is irrelevant, we can omit the division and get 10 log P. Since dBW, like all dBs, is logarithmic, it gives a far better impression of what the consequences are of more power to the achievable loudness. The written version on the hbproject.com holds a table to illustrate this. You'll find a link below in YouTube. When digital equipment was introduced, there was a need for a digital version of the dB. The reference here is the maximum level, so a digital signal where all bits are one. Hence the name dB full scale or dBFS. Now you are able to calculate any ratio in dBs, even the ratio between your mortgage and your income, although that will not impress the bank since the dB is logarithmic and the financial world isn't, I think. In audio the dB is very handy. According to the Redbook specifications a CD player could output 2 volts at 0 dBFS. 2 volts equals plus 6 dBV as we've seen before. This means that minus 10 dBFS in the digital domain outputs plus 6 minus 10 is minus 4 dBV, provided the player adheres to the Redbook specification. You can add and subtract dBs comfortably. 0 dBV is plus 2.2 dBU, which means that plus 7 dBV is 9.2 dBU, and so on. Sound pressure levels, SPL for short, are also being measured in dBs. The reference here obviously is a sound pressure level, in this case 20 micropascals, which is generally accepted as the threshold of hearing, the lowest level of sound we can hear. Since it's a level and not a power, the same formula is used as for voltages. As with all dB measurements, you need to be able to measure against the reference. Professional SPL meters are calibrated at regular intervals using expensive calibration devices. Cheaper SPL meters will seldom be calibrated with precision, but still can be handy for relative measurements. A sound pressure level meter is often wrongly called a dB meter or, as one of the fifth gear reporters said, a decibellometer. When the term dB SPL is used, generally A weighting is applied. This means that the sensitivity for frequencies is changed according to the sensitivity of our hearing for 40 micropascal. Although widely accepted, the term dB SPL is not officially accepted by the standard organizations that would prefer this way of describing the dB SPL.
I leave you to it with a funny, though true story that illustrates the misconception of the DB better than anything. A pub owner was fined for breaking the law on noise pollution by 12 dBs. Completely convinced of the ridiculous rules, he told the reporter, it was only 12 dBs too loud, I've looked it up, and 12 dBs equals the sound of a dropped needle. He really thought he exceeded the sound level by the noise of a dropping needle. We now know he was four times too loud. As always you can read the full article including links and more on the hbproject.com. More videos are on the way, so subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook page or my Twitter account if you want to remain informed. You will find the information in the description below. Questions can be posted below on my Facebook or Google Plus page or on the contacts page of the hbproject.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends about it. My name is Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you the next time. And don't forget, enjoy the music.